I mean, that's clearly what happened here. And I don't, I, I, he doesn't seem like he's that smart. And I think he's going to get in a lot of trouble. Well, I don't know. I, I you know, like I said, uh, I'm going to do what I need to do to uh, uh, clear clear this matter up. You know, I won't rest on just simply talking to you. I will, you know, pursue other avenues. But it's difficult for me because of the timing. I'm way down here in Mexico right now, and uh, you know, I don't have access to get on television and deny these charges unless I drive all the way back up. And you know, that's a two-day drive. That's very brutal. So. Uh, I, the timing of this is also very remarkable, Alex, and it's amazing that, you know, but I, I thank you because just keep, I, I, in fact, I have to ask you, Alex, help. You're my man right now. You're my media guy. You're the only guy I have access to talk to. So it's going to fall on your shoulders, my friend, to clear my name here immediately. Well, we all know what happened. You bet. I'm the one. It was my crew showed it to me a few hours after it happened. That was on Wednesday. And I said, this is going to no, that was Thursday. I said, this is going to get really, really big. And uh, by Friday, it was all over the TV stations. And I just kept, you know, telling Ty, it was trying you every five minutes, try to get your dad. To, you know, obviously this isn't true, but we got to get a response. And now they, I'm sure they think it's real funny what they've done. And I know, you know, you've been working really hard. You deserve a vacation. But I'm afraid you're going to probably have to get back in the RV and drive up to California. But here's the problem. You know, in the last five years, when you went on CNN, Fox, you cleaned their clocks. So now they don't have you on as often. And uh, I think they're probably going to try to close the doors on you so they can just get away with all this. But they're not going to be able to ignore, obviously, what comes out of it later. Uh, but um, that's just what Rupert Murdoch does. But I think you're right. Your initial point that this is News Corps doing this, this is their specialty. And so you ought to, I mean, it's the mark of the fact that you're a patriot and that you'll tell, talk about 9-11 being an ins having evidence of inside job. You'll talk about Kennedy being assassinated by the government or elements of it. You'll talk about the wars being frauds. Uh, you'll talk about all this. So they need to try to destroy you ahead of this big police state. You've been criticizing their NDAA, their, their TSA. The checkpoints on the highways. Uh, look, look, they're in. They're putting out fake ads saying that Ron Paul put them out, being racist towards Asians, and then it turned out it was tracked back to uh, Huntsman's people. And, and but the media now won't won't retract it. I mean, they're they're listen. They've got people dressed up as racist hayseeds claiming that they support Rand Paul and Ron Paul and getting caught. They're they're uh, governor. I think you're going to see more dirty tricks. I mean, they because you're over the target. Well, maybe so, Alex. You know, that there's nothing I can do about that. I'm going to be who I am. I'm going to continue to speak out on everything because I believe, I believe in our Constitution. I believe in our Bill of Rights. And I believe that they're right in the crosshairs right now. If the country doesn't rise up and protect citizens and, and our Constitution and Bill of Rights, that we're going to lose our country. Because uh, I truly believe that. Because everything that I'm learning and the more I get into it and see what's going on, the more we have to be that much more vigilant. And as I said, I'm, i got to count on you now, Alex, because right now my hands are tied down here. I don't have the ability to, to uh, although if, if it could be set up that I could do television somewhere, I would be happy to go you know, on satellite and go on any one of these shows. So if you're in contact with Fox, who appears, appears to be out to destroy me, tell them I'll be available anytime I possibly can. But because of the remoteness of where I live, it's difficult. Yeah, you may have to drive into some major Mexican city, too, and probably do an uplink there. Uh, well, I, I just can't believe they, I mean, I guess they've already destroyed their credibility so many times. Uh, they don't care about uh, doing this again and again. And, okay. and again, this is an issue. We're going to come back and finish up the rest of it. But you've heard it, mainstream corporate horror media that reports about WMDs in Iraq and Easter bunnies in your closet. Uh, you want to have Ventura actually talk about this, that Fox has made this big story? Here he is, man. Here comes the lawsuits, too. All right, we're going to get to most of the interview, but we'll air the rest of it tomorrow, 11 a.m. But I brought up this, this guy that, that, that told these fairy tales, and I asked Governor Ventura, wouldn't it be best for him to go ahead and go public now before he's under oath? Here it is. Uh, yeah, I, I agree totally that it would be in his best interest to tell the truth. Absolutely, that this thing never happened and, and that it's all fabricated because the longer it goes on, the worse and worse it's going to be. 
Wow. Uh, well, Governor, thank you so much. Uh, you've got our hotline numbers here throughout the week. Anytime you've got points you want to make, uh, and, and, and I know you're down there to exercise and to t you know take a few months off before you come back. And I know you're down there writing another book. Now that's coming out uh, uh, later this year, but what a way to start 2012. Uh, they are, I mean, the sim something similar happened to me, and you know it's staged when suddenly it's all over the Dallas Morning News, Denver Post, national TV within minutes, you know, extras calling you. But I was out there protesting uh, Obama in 2008 at the uh, DNC because I knew he was going to be the same as Bush, and Michelle Malkin shows up. And these people start screaming, kill Michelle Malkin, and getting behind me and leaning down behind me. And they had cameras. And I was like, what are you doing? And they had a mask and hats on. And then I saw them leave with Malkin, and I was like, what was that? And then the headlines were out within hours that I was saying, kill Michelle Malkin, leading a mob. And I had people saying, your career is over. You're saying, kill women. Thank God we were able to upload video. I threatened to sue a bunch of people and all retracted with the Dallas Morning News. But that was enough to discredit them. And they, and they tried to say I was saying, kill a woman, Gov. So I've, I've had them do similar stuff. Let me just say this, Alex. I won't threaten. <laughs> well, it's just amazing. Get what I just said. Wait, if you got what I just said to you, I won't threaten it. You sound pretty mad at uh, at Chris Kyle. Well, I didn't even know his name until you told it to me today. That shows you how distant this whole thing is. I don't even know who he is. I, I, I have no idea if I've ever met him because, you know, when I go out there, you meet many other SEALs that weren't of your era and, you know, hi, how you doing? You shake hands or whatever it might be, or they come up to you because I know for many times I was there always with Rudy Bosch, you know, Chief Bosch mm -hmm. from Survivor. And we would be so inundated with picture taking that we would sit and laugh and Rudy and I would say, you know, we need to get those cardboard cutouts so everyone can stand next to us and get their picture taken. And that way we can go over and enjoy and have fun because it would take it, you know, at that point, Rudy was red hot because he was the original Survivor show and all that. And so that would go on. So there has never been a time at any SEAL event that I've gone to where I felt threatened, where I've been assaulted where anything bad has ever happened to me. And, you know, being flattened or knocked down into a bar, in a bar five years ago, you would think I could remember that, Alex. You'd think that would make an impression on me, but it hasn't. But we know, because, because I've seen you with troops and had you on my show 50 times and seen in other shows, you always say, my heart goes out to those dying because of these lying politicians. It's so horrible. I mean, you would never say something like that. I've seen you talk about your mom and dad and get a tear in your eye. I mean, that is such a load of venomous garbage. And, and I want to close with a quote here of an advisor to Fox News and, and one of their main political correspondents in an interview with the New York Times Magazine, October 17, 2004, when Karl Rove said, in what we call the reality-based community, which he defined as people who believe the solutions emerge from your judicious study of discernible reality, that, quote, that's not the way the world really works anymore, he continued. We're an empire now, and when we act, we create our own reality. And while you're studying that reality judiciously, as you will, we'll act again, creating other new realities, which you can study too, and that's how things will sort out. We're history's actors, and you, all of you, will be left just to study what we do. My dad last night was over for dinner, and he said this reeks of Karl Rove, who lives here in Austin, by the way, and, 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 and regardless, they think they can just tell the public something and that makes it reality, like Obama saying dropping bombs all over Libya is not a military action but is a kinetic action. Uh, they think just because they roll some punk out to say something that makes it true, Governor. Well, absolutely, and it doesn't make it true. And when I come back and get back up there, the, uh, in fact, before I get there, you know, the, the ball will be rolling. You know, I'm, I'm doing what I can do to clear my name, and I'll do whatever it takes to do that. Because, uh, you know, I, I'm the kind of guy, Alex, I'll, I'll be happy to admit when I do something, but I don't want to be credited with things that I don't do. And uh, I would think this yeah. guy wouldn't want to be credited also with assaulting me. You know, he never did it. 
It never happened. And why I, I, somebody needs to ask him why he's telling this story, because it's not true. Well, I tell you, Gov, this is going to boomerang on them because they crafted the most vicious lie they could and sold it as if it was absolute truth from the beginning because they are concerned about you. They are scared of you with a third party run or or if somebody picked you for a VP. They know you've been talking behind the scenes some to the libertarians uh, and their concern. So they 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 put something out saying you were glad that Navy SEALs were dead in front of their family. The most sickening thing you could say to military people. They, when they made their move on you, they did it when you were out of the country. They forged the most wicked lie they could, and uh, you know, you say you will defend yourself. You're not stupid. You've got to. You're not going to probably the way they're hyping it uh, do very well from this unless you absolutely, you know, go after these people. And you know that. And so, I, God knows what's coming next if if they're going to uh, move with something this dangerous. Yeah, I don't know, Alex, but uh, I'll be on my toes. I have to admit, though, this one caught me off guard. I never expected to be hit with what they hit me with. Oh, they're going to make up a lie. Did, so. If they're going to make, well, listen, Ty was telling me that uh, that you were talking about it's kind of arcane, but you know, being an expert on the JFK assassination and covering it in your hit TV show for True TV, uh, and people can read your statements, by the way, at The Real Jesse Ventura on Facebook. We're linked to the statement at Infowars.com. The article is exclusive. Jesse Ventura blast Navy SEAL punch hoax as a total lie. Uh, but, uh, you know, you talked about, uh, but, but in your own words, and I know you got to go, uh, that this is like them mailing a rifle, uh, the Carcano, from Chicago to Dallas when you could buy a gun anywhere with no registration in 1963. You said, what are they going to start mailing guns from Chicago to you down in Baja, Mexico? I don't know, but uh, always remember, Alex, they... You know, they said that Oswald was in Mexico while they also said he was at a shooting range. And so I'm getting accused of doing all these things. Do you think there's a double of me? You know, there's that famous book, uh, Lee and Harvey. I believe Armstrong is the author. Do you think that they have a double of me out there that's causing all this trouble? <laughs> well, you know what? That is the exact kind of stuff they do. You know what they did to Garrison? He'd be in an airport and walk in the bathroom, and men would start trying to grab on him, and there'd be police waiting right there. I mean, uh, look, look, they're doing a whole bunch of this stuff to Ron Paul, too, right now. They Again, they put out a fake video saying it was his, making fun of Asians. Fox, CNN all took it, and it turns out now it goes back to one of the, the people he's running against, and they're even bragging about it. That's how dumb they think the public is. So pray for Jesse Ventura, pray for Ron Paul, pray for me, uh, because, folks, you know, we're not perfect, but we're not under the globalist insider's control, and that's why we're wild cards, we're loose cannons. The system is scared of us. Governor, thank you so much. Uh, okay, one, one, one last thing, Alex, one last thing. I want to state on your show first. My wife and I are not suicidal. We're in great health. We're good drivers, and uh, we and we don't have Twitter. So anybody that says that I've Twittered anything, I, you know as well as I do, I don't own a cell phone. And you got to own a cell phone to Twitter. So anything done on Twitter is also false. But again, Alex, we're, we're not suicidal. We're in good health, and we're very good drivers. Well, you and your wife are very smart, so I don't have to tell you something you don't know. But for some of the new audience may not understand, I told Ty the same thing off air. I said, uh, you know, sometimes they do a really bad demonization and then they kill you so that you can't defend yourself. So I'm glad you got this out here. And, and, and please, viewers and listeners, make sure you get this out to everybody, to everybody out there, uh, because if they can destroy Jesse, folks, we got to stand together or hang separate, as Ben Franklin said. That's why we got to stand with Governor Ventura against this outrageous lie, because they'll get away with it with Ron Paul or anybody else that comes out in the future. We've got to stand with Governor Ventura right now. I mean, look at how they shut down that episode okay, of the police folks. state FEMA camps. That's most of the interview. I ran out of time. I'll have a little bit more tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central. Great job of the crew. And again, Jesse came on and said, yes, we must stand together. They can destroy me. They can destroy anybody. God bless you all. Infowars.com will post the full interview.